morning. Uh, we're going to try something a little different today. Uh, yesterday we went to what we thought was going to be the secret caves where the Rembrandts were hidden from the Nazis. But as the day unfolded, it became so much more that I, uh, I broke it up into a couple of segments. And actually the first segment which we posted yesterday was uh, Fort St. Peter. And it's located on uh, St. Petersburg, which means St. Peter's Mountain. It's the only mountain in Holland. It's in the southwest Holland in the town of Maastricht. And uh, it in itself was incredible because the story was that the French uh, attacked 20 times and eventually uh, stormed Maastricht. And the people of Maastricht decided to build the fort up on the hill. And that was in 1701 with a lot of history already behind and some more history to come. And uh, the fort was uh, attacked and damaged in 1794, but they did not gain access, so it prevailed. Now, a couple hundred years later, the fort is decommissioned, but it's still there. We walked around yesterday and posted a nice video. And then we proceeded on to the caves. Well, the caves aren't actually caves. It was a uh, place of beautiful limestone. So the people went there to carve blocks for the buildings. And uh, we found out that it was 750 years old and that there are 2,000 tunnels because so much stone had been cut out. And they said it was probably 200 kilometers worth of tunnels, which would stretch from here to Amsterdam. So that was interesting. And then the, uh, the art and the Rembrandts and the World War II and the Nazi story came from when Germany occupied this country in World War II. They wanted to ship the art off under the guise of protecting it. Well, the uh, guards at the Rijksmuseum uh, said we have these secret caves and we could build a vault there and protect them, both uh, security-wise from bombing and environmentally. So then that took place. So actually they were storing the 750 great artworks instead of having them shipped to Germany where they probably would never have return. So we made the tour into the caves and you'll see that in the, our upcoming video. Um, as fate would have it, towards the end of the war Maastricht was the first place in Holland to be liberated and the Nazis didn't have time to get the art out. So it was returned to the uh, national Rijksmuseum, and uh, that's kind of the rest of the story. So uh, there's more, and uh, we'll reveal it as we go along with it. Uh, studying up on, rem being reminded of something, or understanding something that you only had a concept of, and now you, where I say where fact meets fiction. So it, it's okay. Uh, even if it's fiction, it's a start. I was thinking that uh, like mythology plays a part. It keeps the idea alive that something beyond ourselves is available. All right, have a great day and pleasant journeys. Good morning. Here we are at Mont St. Peter. It's the only mountain in the Netherlands. And uh, it's a beautiful but blustery day. Uh-huh, and we're going to be going underground to the caves, and I suspect that even though they'll be chilly, they're going to be warmer than it is outside. So, here we go. We'll see you inside. All right, full circle. We left the fort, we crossed the parking lot, and we are on the trail now, making our way to 
to the entrance of the cave. <clears throat> There is a tour group and a tour leader, so I'm going to limit my comments. It reminds me of the countryside where I would go to the steeplechase back in the day, the horse fairs on the weekends in Pennsylvania and uh, Maryland. How do you pronounce that, Olga? What's that? Poland Star. In my opinion. Yes. <laughs> that is an artichoke right there at the edge. That one. The spiky one. We saw those all over Corfu. I think you're going to just have to be in mystery for a little bit. We have uh, started into the cave. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the... Uh, the dock, 1.7 meters. And Olga is one of the lantern bearers. Which, of course, we're at the back of the pack. Nice, huh? I like it. Look at it. He said we're going 30 meters underground. Okay. These are limestone caves. There's some light dust on the ground. Of tunnels? Yeah. 20 kilometers of tunnels. So that'd be like uh, 13 miles of tunnels. He was the guard of the art in Holland. Mm -hmm. He was guarding it. Yeah. Good. Let's try to keep up with the rest. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm already having to duck. I have my miner's lamp on my head in case I get to separate it. Okay, here's the first turn. It was a Netflix movie about uh, the Americans retrieving the art, <clears throat> and the Nazis were in one of the tunnels. Americans were in one of the tunnels and the Germans were in the third. No, not the Germans, the Russians. And, uh, and when they got to the, one of these spots, they didn't know which way to go. And he says, well, it has to be one of them.
There's only one corridor, no side corridors, one way. And this is where it starts to get a little difficult. You can go down here, and then uh, you can see the choice to go to the left, to the right, to the head. Uh, keep on straight ahead, and then you want another junction to go to the left or to the right. Uh, you can also go into this corridor up there, and that's the same. You can go to the left, to the right, straight ahead, or into this corridor over there, and that's the same. Left, to the right, to the left, to the left, to the right. It's uh, made of about 8,000 corridors. And this is why I would like to uh, ask you please stay together. Do not roll off uh, one of these corridors on your own because finding a way back is quite uh, difficult. Um, let's go this way. Spur of the moment continues to wrap. So, if you have the master plan background and the Dutch Center for Preservation of Nature, welcome uh, into the, the caves. Uh, we actually call this cave, but if you look around you, these are not uh, natural caves, especially if you look at the ceiling. Whereas normally in natural caves you have uh, stalactites coming down, water dripping off, but that's not the case. If you look at the walls here, you can clearly see that they've been removing part of the stone. Uh, these caves are actually an old mining system, as they started about 700 years ago to remove the stone from the mountain, and they would use these very large bricks to build the city of Maastricht. Whenever you walk through the historical center of Maastricht, you will see many houses, churches, bridges made of this kind of stone, the milestone from the St. Peter's Mountain. So for about 700 years, men would come down here with very big soles that would cut the rocks, remove them outside and build the city. <coughs> Until the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, as in Maastricht, we then have the Industrial Revolution. And thanks to this Industrial Revolution, they found out machines that could take the work from the man, and then they started to get, dig out the, uh, the mountain from the top of the mountain, about 30 meters above us. Using these machines, they would dig into the mountain. But that means that there were no, mine, no more mine workers coming down here to do this hard labor by hand and leave it to the machines. And so for the owners of the case, they don't earn any money anymore, as they cannot sell these blocks. And this is when the owners of the caves came with another idea to earn money using this old mining system as a kind of a tourist attraction that we're talking about 120 years ago. And by then, the industry of tourism was not as it is nowadays. It was a luxury product. And if you wanted to join one of these tours, then you needed to pay a lot of money, something around 100 euro for only one entrance, one person, which is a lot of money. Uh, but also 120 years ago, even more. And this is the reason why the owners of the case ask local artists to come down here and to make some drawings mm. so that they could sell their tours as a kind of uh, tour in the caves with pieces of art. Um, you might have noticed that the temperature down here is slightly different than outside. It's constant here. It's always 11 degrees. Come in the morning, in the afternoon, <coughs> at night, but also in the winter or in the summer, the temperature remains at 11 degrees. What we also have is a lot of moisture in the air, about 98% of humidity in the air. <coughs> what we feel it right now, but you can see it if you pour water on the stone, this is what happens. The water gets absorbed by the stone. So it's kind of a sponge, it's absorbed the, the water, and that's the reason why there is no water dripping from the ceiling. Even if it would be raining today, then the water would not drip from the ceiling, but it will through the stone another 30 meters deep. That's where we have the groundwater level. So if you draw the mountain like this, this is the top of the mountain. We are 30 meters under the top of the mountain, but again, 40 meters above groundwater level. So the water flow through the stone, and the stone is very porous, very soft, it's sandy. And that means that if you want to make a drawing like that one, 
it's only possible with charcoal. Charcoal is the only material that will stick on the wall. If you try to paint something, then you have the same uh, as the water, the paint will be absorbed by the stone. So this drawing is are made with charcoal, but it means that it's very uh, easy to remove. It's like a school board with chalk, you write on your school board, but you can remove it very easily with your hand. And this is the reason why we'd like to ask you, please do not touch any drawings or any inscription on the walls, because these are part of the history of this case. You're free to take pictures, it's not a problem at all, but please do not touch the, the walls. This is the square of Our Lady in Maastricht, as it used to be 120 years ago, when this painting was made, this drawing was made. Um, of course, now it changed. This is now a very big terrace, but the, um, the drawing was made 120 years ago. It's ne has never been uh, restored yet. It's still original from the first day. to go there as long as we don't touch it. So I'm gonna go. Uh, if I keep moving down the line. Mm -hmm. Oh sorry, shit, sorry. What is your desire? Okay. And then they're gonna be calling for us, so I know. But this is our tour, so we want to see it. And I'm not touching All right. it. Portestraat. It's the short street. Um, when Maastricht has been attacked many times by the French army. Why? The reason is that actually Maastricht was developed through the Middle Age as a trading city. Quite uh, soon they discovered that you could use the river the Meuse to go all the way to the north of the Netherlands, to the North Sea, and there you can get the goods, bring them back to Maastricht and then start to trade. Okay, we came in the vault. This was the guard room. Now it's a little bit of an exhibit. There's the big vault door. So the area around the different uh, corridors was blocked off. And this was the temperature controlled vault that held 750 masterpieces. I'm sure there's a lot more in the history that we're not quite understanding. <coughs> I mentioned to Olga this is not a happy place. But everyone has their own perspective. So there were these 750 paintings that needed to be stored here, and uh, the guards from the Beit Museum in Maastricht, in, uh, in Amsterdam, could choose to go either join your collection and stay here, and look after this collection, or they needed to go to the front. So the guards traveled together with your collection to Maastricht, and first they wanted to try to keep all the paintings from the same master, from the same uh, period of time, all together, but there were too many paintings. And they ended up creating a very big, large puzzle or Tetris system to get all the paintings 
uh, stored in there. On both sides of the racks, there were space things stored. And when I ended up to place all the space things, there were absolutely no room left. It was completely packed with all these pieces of art from the past. By then, this place was insured for a few million euros. Uh, but nowadays, you couldn't even get this place insured. Uh, it's priceless. There was only one painting that they couldn't take inside here, and that's this painting, the most famous. This painting is the night watch, because actually in real size it's about 4 meters by 6 meters, and it wouldn't fit through the door. <laughs> so what they did, they took the painting and rolled it up. Like this. And then you could go inside and they placed the painting right here. It was hanging in the coffin. But the problem is, the floor was very heavy. And if you leave it to hang like this for years, then the painting will crack because of its own weight. And so that was one of the tasks of the guards here. They needed to do, uh, roll this. Roll every day a little bit <laughs> to the left so that it will never be hanging on the same place. Yeah. And so every day one of the guards would turn it roll. And this for three years. At the end of the second world war, uh, when Maastricht and the Netherlands were liberated, the trucks came back to Maastricht and they removed all the paintings, <laughs> including the night watch, which was still the roll. They took it back to Amsterdam. And then it was the very first day in years that they rolled it out and that's the paintings of the daylight. And it was a very scary moment because they didn't really know if the painting was still intact or maybe there were scratches. And then you could see that it was in the perfect condition. There's also this story that behind the painting that was hanging there, against the wall, the guards were hiding a transmitter, a radio. And that's because from the UK, there were planes flying out of Maastricht to the Ruhr uh, area. Ruhr area was uh, where the German industries were, and they were producing um, weapons, um, guns, all kind of things. And the uh, Allied forces would try to bomb this area to uh, well, destroy all these industries. If you like, please subscribe.